Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a kind of special review. This is going to be my Hogmanay beer of 2017. Hogmanay in Scotland of course is just New Year's Eve for those of you watching in Sweden and Japan and all these other different countries where you watch these videos. And uh, for this beer I wanted to go with one that was given to me by my friend for my birthday and it kind of reflects the uh, my kind of attitude to this last year really quite well. So for this one we're going to go to Brewdog and we're having a taste of of the Make Earth Great Again. So this one comes in at 7.5% and it's a Saison brewed with Amarillo and Mandarin of Bavaria. One of my favourite hops actually is Amarillo. I love it when you get nice orangey flavours in the beer and they've also added cloudberries to this one. And as you'll know if you've watched the channel before, my uh, Sweden and Scandinavia is a very, very spe special place to me and I will hopefully return over there sometime in August or September. I really have missed it this year when I've been away but I had some great times there over the last couple of years and a big thank you to my friend Grant for giving me this beer for my birthday and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on it so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery quickly if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewdog before there's well over a hundred of those if I'm remembering correctly there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all my Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you and that's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brewdog briefly before we open up the beer then. So Brewdog is the love child of two guys from Aberdeenshire, James Watt and Martin Dickey, and they were founded back in 2007 at a small brewery in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast corner of Scotland, right on the tip of the monster's nose, as I always like to say, because Scotland looks a bit like a monster's head. But more recently, I believe it was back in 2012, they moved to their very new and shiny purpose-built facility in Ellen, which is closer to the city of Aberdeen, where I used to study chemistry. But these guys are known for being a very, very experimental brewery, and they were particularly known at one period in time for their strong beers as well. This was the uh, the Tactical Nuclear Penguin, the uh, Sink the Bismarck and the End of History. They held the title of World's Strongest Beer on three separate occasions before they were overtaken by Schorschbräu again from Germany. And, uh, you know, they've got several brew pubs these days as well, but they were really the, the brewery who kind of launched launched craft beer in Scotland, although these days they have gone more into kind of uh, producing things on the larger scale. They're not quite as experimental as they used to be, I would say. And some of their beers turn out really, really nicely. Some of them aren't quite as good as they used to be, if that makes sense. But they do still produce some really nice beers. They also have a chain of brew pubs and things like that. The first of these opened back in uh, 2010 with their bar at the... Uh, in Aberdeen, I, the one night right next to Marshall College. I was going to say Castlegate, but the Castlegate one is newer than that. I was there on the open night of that, and I don't remember much of it at all, but it was really good. And they've expanded these uh, these bars ever since, and uh, I think they're as far away as Tokyo in Japan now, and also Sao Paulo in Brazil, if I'm remembering correctly. And they are looking to constantly expand these. The most recent one I remember reading about was Tallinn in Estonia, and Estonia, of course, is a really good beer country these days. And one of the things that the bars do quite nicely, actually, is that they do try and bring in a lot of the different local beers. My local one in Stirling, for example, brings in a lot of the Fallon beers and stuff like that. So the brew pubs do still help out the little guys and things like that at certain times. But the main thing that's really interesting about this brewery is how they've grown so quickly. So they had their equity for punk scheme which was where fans of the brewery could buy shares and this really propelled them uh, quite far it funded their new brewery they've also built a second brewery over in Columbus Ohio in America and they are looking at further sites in China and Australia if I'm remembering correctly and they did cause a little bit of controversy because an American investment group bought a big chunk of their shares and uh, they have been you know they have been a little bit critical of other breweries who've sold part of their operations and things like that and then they've kind of gone and done that themselves and some of the business practices that Brewdog have done recently have been a little bit questionable but you know to be honest I can't be bothered with this whole um craft beer thing is it still craft and all this I'll drink the beer and if I like it I'll tell you guys on the channel that I like it I just can't be bothered with a lot of the beer drama and things like that that goes on for me it's just all about drinking beer enjoying the science of actually making good beer and stuff as well and talking to you guys the fans that's what it's all about for me but the other interesting thing you'll see from Brewdog in the next little while is that they have started up a distillery in Ellen as well so you will start to see whiskies and uh, gins and things like that I believe the, the gins are already out but I think the whiskies haven't quite come out yet and they'll be released under 
under the name Lone Wolf Distillery. So interesting things to come from Brewdog. I'm sure we haven't heard of the last of them. And they do, of course, as they've done with this beer, like sticking the fingers up to certain people in the political sphere, which is always quite interesting. But that's all you need to know about Brewdog just now. If you want to keep up to date with them, follow them on social media and things like this. And uh, you can find all those links in the video description below, as you always do. So yeah, let's move on to the tasting of this beer itself then. So this one is a 7.5% Saison, as I told you at the start of the video. It's brewed with Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria, and it's got a Pilsner and Wheat Malt base, and they've also added Cloudberries to this one, and it uses a Belgian Ale Yeast strain. As I always like to do, I'll just read you the little blurb as well. So it says on the side here, Make Earth Great Again, a season with Raison d'Etre. This beer is a force of nature with a force for and a force for good. Glacier water from the melting polar ice collapse, Cloudberries from the Arctic Circle, and a liberal dose of conscience from the Granite City. An imperial Saison of character, spice, and citrus notes on the nose with uh, spiced orange, nutmeg, clove, and caramelized banana on the palate. Drinks with a drink dry with a warming body and a hint of tart raspberry to balance the sweetness. Don't know why you would get raspberry when it's cloudberries they've added to it, but okay. The meek may inherit the earth, but it's the strong who will save it. Together we can make earth great again. All the proceeds from this beer will support 1010 Climate Action, a charity that runs positive practical projects focused on tackling climate change at the community level and turns local actions into a force for bigger changes. So yeah, that is pretty cool actually. And Brewdog, to their credit, which is one thing I criticised them for before, they have actually started supporting local charities again, which they did in their early days but they forgot about that for quite a wee while so there you can see the cartoon on this one is pretty good I actually I'm probably going to keep this bottle or at least see if I can steam the label off. I do like that Donald, a robotic Donald Trump fighting the polar bear. And this one, of course, the other idea behind this beer was that it was supposed to stick two fingers up at Donald Trump for withdrawing from the uh, the Paris Pact or the Paris Agreement. I forget exactly what it's called, which was uh, an agreement to reduce CO2 and things like that. I, you know, you've heard me talk about science a little bit on the channel before. As I've told you, I'm a, a spectroscopist. You know, I'm really interested in molecular astrophysics and things like that, finding the composition of stars and all of these kind of things. And from my perspective, when it comes to CO2 and man-made global warming, when you look at the energy that comes from the sun, it's simply not enough to break up greenhouse gases. So those who argue against uh, man-made climate change, you know, they just basically don't know science well enough. It's just people are stupid and politicians listen to money, of course. That's just the way it goes. And unfortunately, that is exactly what is happening in America. But enough of the politics just now. Let's focus on the beer. So as you would expect from this one, it's poured a really nice kind of pale golden straw colour this. I actually would have expected it to be a little bit hazy to be honest when it's a Belgian beer but as long as it tastes nice that's the main thing. You can see there's a solid finger of a frothy white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there and you can smell a little bit of an almost candied fruit coming off this one and a little bit of the orange but we'll take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. To be honest with this one, the aroma, when you sugar it up, you start to get a little bit more of the Saison elements out of it. But really, if you smell it from a bit further away, you could be forgiven for thinking it's like a pills or a lager or something like that. And it does, in fairness, it does use Pilsner malt. It's Pilsner and wheat malt that are in this one. So it really, unless you sugar it up and get some of these yeasty components out of it, you could easily mistake this one just for being a lager beer or something like that. The aroma on this one really isn't that kind of pungent at all. So yeah, it pretty much, it smells a little bit biscuity. There's a little bit of bready character in there. When you sugar it up, you start to get a little bit of this kind of bigger, doughy, bready, Belgian-y sort of yeast character out of it. A little bit of a kind of clovey, grainy spice sort of thing coming out. And you can pick up a little bit of a grassy and floral hop. You know, there is an element. When you sugar it up, you can pick up a little bit of an orangey character from the hops. Of course, with Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria, you are going to get orange, particularly from the Amarillo. You're going to get a nice little bit of a kind of oily orange coming out of it. But yeah, it really, to be honest, the aroma on this beer is nothing like I would have expected. It does smell simply more like a lager. You can pick up a little bit of the cloud berries in it. And of course, if you've tried, like the, for example, the cloudberry cider from Copperberg in Sweden, you will no, you will know exactly how cloudberries taste and how they smell. But with this one, <coughs> but with this one, 
there's really not that much of it at all. It really does smell more like a lager beer than anything else, which is quite interesting. And interestingly as well, it wasn't actually one of the higher rated beers that Brewdog have produced according to Rate Beer and things like that. I think it was 3.2 or 3.3 that it had on Untapped, and I think um, on Rape Beer it had something like a 68 overall and a 40 odd within the style, so that would kind of show you it's not such a, such a it doesn't match the Saison style all that well if that makes sense, but it should be, still be a fairly decent beer, but you know as I always say, taste the beer yourself and make up your own mind, but as I always say as well, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. So with this one, since it's uh, Hogmanay 2017, I want to give a big toast to all you guys, the fans, and say a huge thank you to those of you that have supported the channel over the last little while. A big thank you to my family and friends who supported me through what's been, at times, a really quite difficult year, and uh, just hopefully 2018 is going to be a, a bit better than 2017 has, and we'll also say a big kind of a big, I will give a big middle finger to Donald Trump on his climate policy to be, because to be quite frank, folk who don't believe in climate change are just idiots. So let's get stuck in. A big shout out to my fellow beer tubers as well. Slanja, Skrull. Right. Okay. <coughs> what I would say about this beer is I like it. Is it a Saison? I'm not so sure. It does have elements of the Saison, but it's not quite what I was thinking it would be. Although in fairness, as you take a few more sips of this beer, it does start to mellow out a little bit and you can pick up the things from the Belgian yeasty character. This one, to be honest, it's a little bit more like some kind of hybrid between a sort of Pilsner beer and a Saison. It's almost like a Pilsner that's brewed with a Belgian yeast, which is, is quite an interesting idea. I don't know if that would make it a little bit more like a Belgian blonde or something like that. I can't remember exactly how you brew, how it, what, what makes a Belgian blonde a Belgian blonde. Obviously the yeast will. But I can't think about the malts and the types of malts and things that you would use in it. But to me, that's how this beer comes across. It's almost like a kind of it's almost like a Belgian lager or something like that, actually. Or a Belgian golden ale. But in terms of the flavour and things, I do actually quite like this beer. Wouldn't hesitate to drink it again right enough. But as I always say, it's one of these, it's not one of the bigger things. It doesn't kind of fit so well into the Saison category. But in terms of uh, being a nice drinkable beer, it certainly does give you that. And at 7.5%, I would say that it's actually quite dangerous how drinkable this one is. The volume of this bottle, by the way, I forgot to say, it's a 660, it's not a 750. But yeah, it's, it's certainly quite a nice beer, this one, and you do get a little bit more of that Belgian character as it kind of mellows out on your palate. As I always say, sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start analysing the flavour too much. But yeah, with this one, you can really feel it's got that nice wheaty smoothness that blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that, you start to get a little bit of that lighter, kind of a Pilsner malt flavour, so you get a little bit of that graininess. But then right in the middle of the tongue, you start to get the more kind of biscuity, almost like digestive biscuity sweetness coming out of this. And it's really, really nice, actually. And then as the flavour progresses a little bit more, you start to get some of these Belgian yeasty notes, so you get a slightly thicker, doughy, kind of bready character coming out of it. There's a wee bit of banana there as you progress further into the aftertaste. You've seen how long it was since I took a sip now, but that's when I'm starting to get some of these kind of banana flavours. And the sort of clovey spice it starts to push its way out of the beer at this point as well. When it comes to using a Belgian yeast, of course, the big sort of uh, focus of the flavour, if you like, is how the yeast interacts with the malt base. You always get the yeasty characters right in the middle of your tongue too. The hoppy side of this beer is pretty nice as well. Yeah, you can. The thing is, with this beer, there's a certain point in the flavour where you really can. It almost comes across, you can pick up some of these almost German Weizen-like qualities out of this one. You can feel that that sort of dark, uh, almost, it's not quite caramelly, but that sort of dark banana-y 
and big doughy character really starts to push its way out of this one so it's nicely done like I say my only reservation about this is that they say it's a Saison and it's somewhere it does have some Saison elements to it but it's leaning a little bit more towards the kind of Pilsner quality which is, is really interesting and that's what you want as a beer reviewer you do want beers that are going to test your palate a little bit and in terms of being drinkable and stuff like that which is of course the main thing I do actually quite like this one and maybe that's the idea with it. They're talking about using glacier water. If you think about Icelandic beer, if any of you have tried Icelandic beers, and indeed like Norwegian and Swedish beers, particularly from the north of the country, you will get that nice cleanliness if the if the water comes from the glaciers or goes down the hills and things like this. You really can pick this up. And maybe that's exactly what they were going for with this one. They were trying to make it feel like really clean and really drinkable. So in that regard, that might be exactly what they're they're kind of going for, if that makes sense. Otherwise I could be rambling a load of rubbish right enough. But maybe that's what they're kind of trying to go for. So on the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palette, there's a wee tiny bit of earthiness there. That'll be coming from the Mandarina Bavaria in particular. And as you come further forward along the sides of your palette, there's a nice sort of... Um, floral aromatic note and round the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and sort of grassy and you can pick up a little bit of that kind of cloudberry addition on the sides of your tongue too. The way to tell if they've added fruit to a beer is where exactly on the palate the flavour comes out. If they add fruit to the beer it always comes out on the very edge of your tongue rather than just behind the front curve of the palate which is where you'll get the esters from the hops. And with this one, you can pick up just a little bit of that almost tart cloudberry character there, but it's actually kind of muffled a little bit by the sort of floral floral aromatic notes that you're getting from the uh, from the from the hoppy side of the beer. In terms of the hoppy fruits, though, if you just pay attention to that little oily bubble behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you get these fruity esters. And for this one, yeah, it's mainly oranges there, and actually kind of builds quite well. It builds a really interesting sort of fruity character with that cloudberry note that's there. So mainly it's an oily orange, but it's not too prominent actually. I think the yeasty characters that this beer has is kind of pushing the fruit back a little bit. But in fairness, everything goes together really well. This isn't a beer that's going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs or in terms of uh, yeasty flavours or in terms of malt or anything like that. This is one of the Brewdog beers that's more about how the flavours blend together. This one does a good job. Is it the best beer that Brewdog have produced? I wouldn't go that far with it, but it's nice and it's drinkable. And in terms of the way that they're uh, they're kind of talking about this one... Of course, it might be marketing. That is one thing that Brewdog are particularly good at is marketing their beers. But um, I think when they're talking about glacier water and polar ice caps and stuff melting, it's actually quite interesting how the mouthfeel on this one is uh, as clean as it is. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, I would say it's quite light-bodied. It's a little bit lighter than you would normally expect a Saison to be. There's a nice sort of a smooth carbonation to it. It does have a little bit of oily character, but overall... It's quite a wet mouth feel and it's quite clean. There is a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to it. It's not going to blow your head in terms of IBUs, like I said. The malt base has a good balance between sweetness and the smoothness that you expect of the Belgian uh, of the Belgian yeast strains. And it also does have a little bit of that kind of juicy fruity character as well. But overall, it's a nice beer. It's not one that's going to blow your head in terms of brew dog beers. It's not one of the best ones I've had from them, but I do like it and I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. I would love to try on tap and just see with a little bit of a thicker mouthfeel exactly how it turns out. But like I say, I think the idea with this one is that it's meant to be clean to kind of reflect the whole idea of glacier water and stuff like that. So in a way, it does remind me of some of these Icelandic beers that I reviewed quite a few years ago so hopefully I can review more Icelandic beers in the future as well but Make Earth Great again I agree with the, the sentiment of this beer uh, completely you know Donald Trump just needs to have his head examined if he thinks climate change isn't real either that or of course he might know it's real and is just getting paid off but all of these sorts of things uh, have to play in mind but overall it's a nice beer in terms of the alcohol content that it has as well it covers it quite well and at 7.5 percent it might turn out to be a little dangerous but overall it's a nice beer and i would recommend you have a go at it if you haven't had the chance already so thank you to my friend grant for giving me this one and like i said i hope all of you guys have a nice 2018 and this is a good way to kind of kick it off for me so until the next time slam you just now thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments
comment section below. Do let me know your favourite beers from Brewdog and all this kind of things. But until the next time, I will catch you guys very soon. Make Earth Great again. One of the beers recently released at Brewdog. And a big thank you to my friend Grant for giving me this one. I hope you guys all have a really nice 2018. And thank you for your support over 2017. And there will be more beer reviews coming up very soon. And do keep an eye out for a channel message as well. Slanger just now.